Hey you guys, today is super windy so I'm really glad that we're actually doing a video inside. I want to share with you the plants that I will be growing indoors. Hopefully that would inspire you to get your winter or indoor garden started. But let's first start off by making a cutting. Thank you. Always take more than one cutting because not every single one will take. So thank you plants. Right now we're on the balcony. For those of you who don't know, I converted this space to be a more of like a place where I propagate things. So it's fairly enclosed, but it still has some good air circulation. So when you're growing things indoors, I think this kind of simile as your really bright room because it's mainly enclosed in this area. And some of the space actually like in the far corner against the wall, there's actually not a whole lot of uh, bright light it's more like indirect light in this space so the advantage to growing in here versus indoor is that I get better airflow so I don't have to keep a fan on for those of you who are growing these plants indoor you uh, the advantage you have is that it's going to be warmer in there so I think your plants especially the more um, exotic or tropical plants would grow faster for you when you're actually growing inside the house but you do have to be a little more concerned of airflow so you can you know grow it where it, you know it has like an open space otherwise you can keep a little fan on for ventilation but other than that I'll, I'll also go through a few other things that you have to um, look out for when you're growing things inside the first thing is to choose the right potting soil. You're going to want to use like an organic potting mix that's made more for indoor use. I use these for in like a as a general organic potting soil for most of my plants I would say and I pick them up at the hydroponic store. It's the uh, Happy Frog or uh, Fox Farm or even the Vermifier. You can also pick up any kind of organic potting mixes at like even your local hardware or, or garden center. Uh, just make sure that it you know it's labeled as or it's advertised for indoor use that way you would minimize some of the funky growths that you would get using outdoor soil so other than that you want to choose a space that's really bright so the brightest area in your home would be perfect such as a south facing window or just a really bright window you can put it right next to that area Otherwise, if you don't have that sort of space, or some of you guys may like to grow it in your garage or your basement, set up grow lights. They're really awesome. You can get the ones that are really more inexpensive. You can do like strip lights that are really thin, and you can put multiples of them, or even have like a hanging light that's for, you know, made for growing indoors. Like even tomatoes can grow with these bigger lights with higher watts like the one I have right here. This is the Mars Hydro lights. I've been really enjoying this. I can feel the heat you know coming out of this light. It's just that powerful. It is an LED light. I think one uh, a couple of you guys were asking if I noticed any difference in my electricity bill and I gotta say I did not notice too much of a jump enough for me to notice you know how much the electricity costs running this um, this high watt. This thing runs about 15 hours a day, so every single day. And I've been really loving one of the most amazing things that I'm super happy about with the light is besides doing some propagations that it speed up the growth. There's another plant that wasn't doing really well outside and that is the wasabi plant. Let me show you guys. So this is one of my new favorite plants that I've been growing. You know the real wasabi is actually super expensive if you get it at like a high-end sushi restaurant because most of them are actually made with horseradish and um, they mix it with some coloring. So this is the real deal right here. A real wasabi root, I believe, costs uh, more than a hundred dollars a pound when you get them like the fresh root to just grate it as wasabi. So this plant here likes more like indirect sun, and the problem with that in my space outdoors was that indirect sun is actually locking a lot of brightness, and um, this thing actually just doesn't want that super high 
intense heat that it could burn the leaves, but it does like really bright light. So this uh, this light actually really does the job really well because this thing was literally dying out there. I barely had any kind of stems, you know, left on there, and I just thought, you know, let's just put it under these lights and let's just see what happens because I really love this plant. It's just so beautiful. Look at this, and uh, yeah, so. It took about like maybe five or six weeks and I finally bounced back and here it is! <laughs> Super excited! Wasabi is like a mustard plant actually related to the cruciferous vegetables. So they really do enjoy that cooler weather right now. Besides the wasabi, I actually moved in these propagations that were in indirect light and they weren't looking so good. So I placed them in here for about, I think, four weeks now and they're looking better. Alright, other than that, I want to show you guys some plants that I'm going to be growing on this balcony space. Oh, another thing is you would like, if you grow things that really like more heat such as the ginger, you might want to pick up a, a heating mat, which I would definitely put out here because like I said, this is kind of like, feels like a in bright indoor room out here on this balcony, but it is cooler than in the house where you would have the heater running. So I would definitely keep something like ginger on a heating pad. First one here is the ginger. I see that you guys really enjoyed that episode where I was talking about, you know, what not to do when you're growing ginger. So here is, uh, I guess, what you should do if you want to grow ginger indoors. Ginger is a tropical herb, really just so medicinal, you know, it warms up your stomach and it just creates better blood circulation, just perfect for the winter. So we really love that smell of that warm aroma of, of ginger too, so it's really cool that's actually quite easy to grow them indoors. What you want to start out with them is with um, ginger, you can pick up one of these ginger rhizomes at your uh, you know, grocery store, organically grown preferred. If not, apologize for the wind. Apologize for the wind, you guys. It's super windy today. You want to choose one that's very firm still so that you know it's fresh and it's not, it's not drying out. Like this one here is really wrinkly. And I'm seeing this best one is actually up here. So I'm just going to break this off. Oh, it came off so easily. And it's going to, you know, sprout out from these, these eyes here. You can totally just rip it out like that. Remove it so easily. And that's it. <sighs> Smells so good. So, so good. Ginger is a tropical herb, so it really loves that heat, you know, the warmth, the bright light, the humidity. So if you can create that s sort of environment for it, it's going to grow indoors for you really well. Another thing is, you know, once it it sprouts up the shoot, which looks like this, this is an older plant that I'm actually, I took from outside, but I'm going to continue growing it indoor because ginger actually do die back, believe it or not, in, in zone 10 here in the winter time. So these leaves actually smell really fragrant, pretty similar to ginger, but I think it's a little more uh, stronger hint of floral to me than, than the, the rhizome. So, um, ginger leaves are also edible. Alright, to plant this, can't see much, but basically you're just gonna pop it in like that. Since you grow ginger for the rhizome, you don't need to grow them in a very deep container. Ideally, just like a wide, shallow container would be perfect for it. But since I have it in a small pot like this, once this ginger starts to peek through just above the soil, I can transplant it in a, a larger or a wider container. So there it is. The next one, we are going to do the, the scallions or the green onion. These are perfect when you pick them up at the grocery store. You can definitely start these from seeds, but it's much faster to just do these, you know, stick these in. 
when you pick these up at the grocery store, you can use up and chop up all the greens. In fact, you can even cut them up all the way down to here, just leaving about an inch or an inch and a half away from the root. Then you can plant them. You're going to start seeing the the leaves come out really fast, and you can just harvest these fresh as you go. Right, just you know, on your your windowsill in your kitchen, so you can have these fresh. Scallions or green onions also require very shallow uh, pots, and what's great about them is that you can plant them really close to each other because you're only harvesting the greens, and they don't do any side branching. So that's it. You just put little holes, make a hole, and plant them in. Whenever you see scallions or onions, kind of those plants, the leaves, when they start to droop, but then you know that they're not lacking water is usually just because there's not enough sunlight. So you can move it to an, a brighter location. They should, uh, and then you can trim off the leaves. The new ones would grow back very straight, standing straight and tall. We made these cuttings earlier. This is called a patchouli plant. This is one of the main ingredients that they use to make perfume. So some people find this being like a very intoxicating kind of a smell. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite smell, but I find that when I dry them and, uh, and make a tea out of it, it actually has a really nice fragrance. So I'm growing it for most people use it, you know, uh, they grow it for that smell and for like perfume, kind of an essence, kind of a purpose. But this is edible. It's part of the mint family, so actually it can grow quite fast. It likes that warmth, but it grows really well in the shade. So that's perfect for like an, a house plant. Just make sure that you keep the the soil, you know, well watered, kind of like mint. It grows well on a windowsill in direct bright light and um, some moist soil. But make sure your soil has really good drainage. Let's plant this out. Alright, just stick it in. Actually, I think I want it a little tilted so it comes up straight. That's it. So you can plant any kind of mint on your windowsill. This is a Cuban oregano. I took a cutting the other day and I forgot to plant it, but this thing is so hardy. The bottom tip is a little dried out right now, so I just need to give it a little snip here to freshen up that, that cut. And then we're just going to stick it in here. Cuban oregano, out of most oregano out there, what I have learned is that it's the one of the most sensitive to the cold kind of a, an herb. So you can grow this on a very bright windowsill or under some grow lights would be awesome. That's it. You just, you know, stick the stem in. Easy as that. Just going to place a dome over it, give it some humidity. If you guys haven't seen my uh, video on transplanting, how to avoid or to fix your, you know, transplant shock, you'll understand why I'm doing this. So basically, this is a humidity dome. You can put a uh, like a little plastic bag over the top and maybe poke a few holes on your baggie that would create some humidity for this as well. Got some reflectors, kind of a backdrop to help, you know, make the space a little more bright. Other than mint, you can grow some classic herbs on your windowsill, such as basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary. Make sure you put it by your windowsill or somewhere with really bright light. 
give it a good, you know, good airflow. Don't overwater them. If you're looking into growing leafy greens, don't forget about those microgreens that you can grow super fast or, you know, do some uh, sprouts, which is that grows even faster than microgreens. And I do have a video on how to sprout your own food, so check the link down below. Other than that, lettuce. We love our classic leafy green lettuces and romaines, right? They actually, a lot of lettuce or butter lettuce, they are grown hydroponically, meaning they're indoors. So if you put them in a bright windowsill or you grow it, you know, under the uh, a grow light or even a fluorescent light, they would do really well. Another plant that I want to share with you is the ashitaba. Really love this highly medicinal herb. It looks so beautiful, so ornamental, but it's a great looking house plant growing it by the windowsill. And this is definitely, you know, use it as like a leafy green uh, or juice it. It's just so fragrant. I love the way it looks. All right, the last one I want to show you is a really, I love this plant. <laughs> this is a tea tree plant. Tea tree is native to Australia. It grows kind of like in the as a second story tree in a more swamp kind of a land. It is that tea tree as in tea tree oil that you use for skin irritations and you know antifungal, antibacterial properties, just a really potent medicinal uh, plant. So it grows really well outdoors in a lot of sun, but also grows well in a more indirect sunlight, like as a house plant. You can overwinter it if, if places that freezes over. You can over it winter putting in the brightest window. If I grow this outdoors, especially in the warmer season, I keep it quite uh, moist. This I just wanted to share with you guys. I'm actually going to keep it outside unless it has certain super cold days, I would bring it inside. Otherwise, it grows really well in zone, I believe from eight to 10, it actually can grow outdoor. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Besides, did you know that you can actually, it smells better than the essential oil when it's fresh. You can actually boil this and make a tea out of it. So it's not just for topical use, but you can use a little bit of this as a med for like medicinal purposes. Mm, it would be so good to make these fresh and like breathe it in, do like a, as a aromatherapy kind of a thing for the respiratory system. Thank you so much for joining me in this space, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, where I do some instant updates of my life, what I'm growing, where I'm at, all that good stuff that you don't get to see in real time on on this channel. If you would like to support my work, please go visit my website at wendyland.com and I'll leave the links of all the things and everything that I've mentioned and referenced in this video with the links just provided with uh, provided for you below this video. Thank you all so much you guys. Stay safe, stay warm, and I shall see you right back here very soon. Bye!